everyone and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be quite a major video. We're going to talk about 20 things that YouTube made me buy. Sounds like madness, I know, but I swear to you there is method to this madness. By no means am I saying that any of the products today are completely terrible or a complete waste of money for every single person on the planet but for me personally there's definitely like an order to how good something was to me in my own eyes so today we're gonna start off by talking about makeup accessories so basically things like palettes empty palettes are uh, things like brushes and things like that we'll start off from the least favorite to the most favorite Number five for the category of makeup accessories is going to have to be my Muji set of drawers. I purchased this off of Amazon because Muji website does not ship to Israel. And I thought that it would be safe to buy it online because everybody does that. However, take a look at my drawer. It's completely broken. Had I not been determined to keep it and not waste 200, if not more, shakels to absolute waste and just throw it completely straight out of the garbage I decided to save it with some tape. I basically taped the whole thing together and it's been holding on well for the last two years or so but it breaks my heart every time I see it and because of that reason I don't think that this was the smartest thing for me to buy um, because of YouTube Next we have nail polishes. Nail polishes are definitely something that YouTube can tend to hype up and two of the most like hyped up brands are going to be Essie and OPI. I only have one Essie nail polish and I don't really like it so I thought what's the point of talking about this but a brand that I really do enjoy is OPI. Ever since I got my acrylic nail polish I haven't really worn OPI nail polishes at all because I get them done at the salon but to be honest these are really really good they are going to be my number four in terms of how good or how smart my investments based on YouTube were but simply because there is absolutely nothing special about nail polishes I haven't found a formula that I felt like were or, or a formula that was worth the investment and these are definitely more expensive for nail polishes especially here in Israel they cost about 60 shekels whereas you can buy nail polishes for like 10 shekels or something like that so it's like six times the price and that's definitely an investment in my opinion so I don't know how smart it is especially because I have at least 15 OPI nail polishes. I love them, don't get me wrong, but they're just a little too too overpriced in my opinion. Something that I have in my opinion, and it's in, it will come in the place in the third place of the makeup accessories, is going to be my Mac 217. I like it, I do not love it. It's very functional. It's incredibly, incredibly functional. If you have this brush, you know how very useful it is. But it's a little rough, especially for an eye brush. It's a little bit scratchy and a little bit dry and it doesn't feel as nice on the eye area as I would have liked it to be. So because of that reason, I just think that it was a little bit of a purchase that I could have done better without had I purchased something from Hakuhodo or something maybe from Zoeva. I don't know because I haven't really tried Zoeva brushes at all, to be honest. I'm looking forward to doing that one day, but for the time being, the MAC 217 is definitely very useful. It's just not as nice as something like Hakuhodo brushes are. Staying with the topic of brushes, let's talk about a brush that I really love and I use pretty much every day. To come in the second place, we're going to talk about the fan brush from Smashbox. This is the best like highlight brush that I've ever, ever, ever used. I completely adore it. I use it every single day, as I said. The name of the brush and the name of the brand has completely rubbed off because this is my most used brush without a speck of doubt in my mind. I use it every single day, every single day. It's very nice, it's very soft, it's very fluffy, it's not too dense, but it's not like 
to the the bristles aren't like too sparse that you will feel like you haven't deposited or applied anything onto your skin on the contrary it's absolutely perfect and i really really like it but it didn't come in the first place because there's something even better than this this is amazing but there's something even better and that thing is the mac empty double-sided palette as you can see it's not empty anymore because i have a ton of eyeshadows in it i keep my in maquillage ones and my mac ones so i love this because it's very useful you can you can do whatever you want in it you can put whatever you want in it you can put lipsticks if you want there are like special dividers for lipsticks you can put blushes um you can put any kind of product in here even foundations i feel like the foundation is like thick enough where it's like uh, like a solid cream, you can definitely put it here with the right dividers. So I adore this thing. I use it every single day. I keep my everyday um, use eyeshadows here because of easy access, and it's just absolutely perfect. I really like it, and it definitely has to be the best makeup accessory thing that I've ever, ever, ever purchased. And if, I, if this got completely full, I'm going to purchase another one because I really, really like it. Okay, enough with makeup accessories. Let's talk about face products. We're going to talk about five face products and we're going to start off with something that's completely amazing. It's going to come in the fifth place because I have a lot of things that I want to talk about that I think are better than this. I love Guerlain bronzers. Guerlain bronzers are the bronzers that I own the most of. But to be honest, I only own like Guerlain bronzers and like some contouring products which aren't necessarily bronzers but i can use them as bronzer the Guerlain bronzer that i think is great but not as good as other Guerlain bronzers is four seasons it's going to be very controversial very controversial because many people swear by this i prefer the one that has like a solid color because I like the formula better, I like the pigmentation, I just I just like the effect that it has on my skin better than I like this. But this is absolutely good too. I really, really love it. It's a great product, it's just, it's not the best that I've ever purchased because of YouTube. The second, um, or the fourth product that I want to talk about today is going to be another product that I think is amazing, but it's just not the best product that I've ever purchased because of YouTube and it's the Clinique um, cheek pop blushes these are the ones that look like daisies this is like if this is not adorable I don't know what is because this is completely the most adorable thing that I've ever seen in terms of makeup packaging and imprints and things like that um, it's amazing really really good it's a very good color it's a very it has a very good formula it's very long lasting and everything it's just not the best thing that I've ever purchased because of um, YouTube. I really like it. I use it quite a lot and I highly recommend it. But if you want to buy one thing that I think is the best, this is not the best. Moving on to something else. We're going to talk about a highlighter that's very loved in the YouTube world. And that is Mary Luminizer. Mine comes in the third place because it completely broke. It broke multiple times. I tried to fix it and it keeps breaking. The formula is very like creamy and fragile that it can break it can break by itself. I don't know how people can have it for a long time without it breaking on them because this has broken on me multiple times. What saves it uh, is how amazing it is on the skin. It's very, very shiny, it's very potent, and it's very reflective and also it doesn't look like it's too much on the skin it looks perfect on the skin honestly it's it's my favorite highlighter i like becca champagne pop i like the um lancome one that i have i also like the charlotte tilbury one that comes with the sculpt and glow palette but this go away go away motorcycle this this is the one that i love the most but it comes in the third place because there are things that are even better than this Coming at coming in second place, we're going to talk about this. This thing is the Kevin O'Quan Sculpting Powder. Huh. Huh. I, if I had known how amazing this is, I wouldn't have waited this long to buy this. I waited a long time to buy this because of the price. It's like $50 for like 4 grams of product, if I'm not mistaken. It's like very little powder and it's too expensive for what it is. But it is completely the best sculpting powder that I've ever, 
ever used in my entire life. I tried using the Charlotte Tilbury one, I tried using eyeshadows for sculpting, I tried using bronzers for sculpting, I tried using the Smashbox contour palette and this has got to be the ultimate one. This is this is the best in my opinion. But can you believe that there's even one thing that's even better than this? Something that YouTube made me buy. And ever since I bought this, I've been singing its praises. I've been dreaming about this at night. It's the Cojun Do Aqua Foundation. This foundation is a foundation that I've been using every single day. I have been mixing it with other things because of the color at the moment. Since it's summer, I do have quite a bit of a tan to my skin. Not quite a bit of that, just a tiny little bit because I try to avoid the sun as much as possible. But I've definitely developed a tan to my skin. So I can't really use this by itself because it's just a little too fair for my skin at the moment, so I mix it with other foundations. But this thing is the best foundation I have ever used. It is expensive for a foundation, but and it doesn't really have that amazing of a color of a color selection. But since it matches me, I'm gonna talk about this and I'm gonna tell you that this is my favorite, favorite, favorite foundation in the history of mankind. I thought for the longest time that nothing is gonna rival Lingerie de Po by Guerlain, but this is, this is a gem. I will never be without this ever in my entire life. So I adore it. Really, really amazing. Okay, moving on from that to, talk, to talking about eyes. Let's talk about something that I am on the verge of hating. I don't hate it simply because of the colors. I talked about this in an Arabic video. I said that it's a it's a disappointing product, and it really is. We're gonna talk about the Tartlet palette uh, for a second. This is the original one, not the Tartlet in Bloom. It has 12 matte shadows, and they're all neutrals. I bought this especially for this mid-row, and I must admit that the color pigmentation is not consistent, the blendability here isn't great, and I don't enjoy using this whatsoever. I feel like I need to work harder than I have to do with another palette I'm going to talk about very, very soon. I don't know why I got this, to be honest. I know because of the mid-row, but I could have found similar colors to it and I would have been much happier than I am with this one. This is just really disappointing for me because of how difficult it is to blend and how inconsistent the pigmentation of the colors is. So I really don't like it. Coming on in number four is going to be an eyeshadow that's really good but incredibly overpriced because it's just as good as drugstore eyeshadows because some drugstore eyeshadows are really, really amazing nowadays. And it's going to be the um, Estee Lauder Pure Color and the um, Defining Eyeshadow Wet and Dry. I have one in the Magnetic Finish and it's in the, in the Brilliant Finish and it's called uh, Magnetic Rose. It's a gorgeous color. But it's nothing better than, let's say, the L'Oreal Infallibles or the L'Oreal L'Ombre Pures. As you can see, I really like L'Oreal eyeshadow. It's really not better than any of them. And it's much more expensive and I don't get the price. It's a nice product. It's just not worth the money for me. Really not worth the money. I was disappointed in the fact that it just didn't do anything spectacular to my face. It was good, but... So are many other much cheaper colors. Coming to you at the third place, we're going to talk about something expensive, something that I love, but something that is not the best thing that YouTube made me buy. And we're going to talk about eyeshadows. We're going to talk about this Tom Ford eyeshadow in the color, eyeshadow quad in the color titanium smoke. If you want a smoky palette, this is the one that you should get because of the colors, because of the pigmentation, and because of the formulation. It's amazing. I really think that the glitters here are splendid. And I think that the mattes are wonderful. The pigmentation of the satiny colors, like for example, this gray one, isn't great, but the mattes and the glitters are definitely the winning points of Tom Ford colors, in my opinion, or Tom Ford eyeshadow quads. I think that this is a very unique palette because of how smoky it is and how appropriate it is for a night out. If you want to slay a night out look, this is the one that you should be getting. It comes at the third place because it's, again, not the best thing that YouTube made me buy. There are other things that YouTube made me buy that are much better than this. Such as the Kat Von D Shade and Light um, uh, eyeshadow palette. This is a palette of another 18 colors, 18 matte colors, 
then they range from warm to cool to to cool to neutral i adore this this palette feels like you don't have to do a lot of work blending or applying the pigmentation is beautiful it's quite consistent and i must say that they blend like absolute butter you have no idea how easy it is to use this palette it's probably the most goof proof palette that i have in my collection it's gorgeous and it's absolutely stunning what i love about this is how amazing the black is and how amazing the light colors are you can use the light colors like something like this if you have fair skin to set your under eyes and if you have fair skin you could also use this as a contour color really it's amazing i have nothing bad to say about this absolutely nothing bad and i know that at the moment we have a lot of neutral um, palettes especially for example something that's really tempting is the viseart um neutral palette the, the one in the number zero one neutral mats something like that honestly i think that this is also a great option i haven't really tried it but i've heard quite a lot about this but this is like half the price of viseart and it's beautiful i don't see why we need to splash out on the viseart if you have something like this Last but not least, we have a single eyeshadow. Can you believe that this a single eyeshadow managed to rival everything that I talked about earlier? I can't believe it. But the one I'm going to talk about right now is MAC Nylon. MAC Nylon is the eyeshadow that I would want to make myself because of how amazing it is. I like to use it every single day to light up the inner corner of my eyes, also my brow bone. It's so, so stunning. It's so, so pigmented and so, so shiny and glistening and gorgeous. To be honest with you, there's absolutely nothing bad that I can say about this. It's one of my favorite things in the history of mankind. And I completely, completely adore it. So, um, it has to come at number one. It just has to. There's nothing else that's better than this. Nothing in my opinion. So we're down to the last category, which is lips and the last five products. All of the lip products I want to talk about today are products that I genuinely like, but they are ranked. So we're going to talk about something that I love, but is probably the least good one that YouTube made me buy to the absolute best one that YouTube made me buy. I might come to you right now as a little shocking because of what I'm gonna say but I have to give number five to Tom Ford lipsticks they are gorgeous do not get me wrong I have a fair share of them and I want to get a few more to be honest but they are not the best lipsticks that I've ever purchased that YouTube has ever made me buy I have a lot of products that YouTube made me buy, buy in terms of lip products we're gonna, we can talk about drugstore things, we can talk about other high-end things, but I got rid of a lot of things that I don't like. For example, the YSL Voluped lipsticks, I hated them. So I just, I, I gave the one that I had away and I never looked back because I hate that thing. Also, it smells really bad. These things smell lovely. Um, they smell a little bit like grannyish to me, a tiny little bit, but I can get over that. I really, really like them. They're very good products, but... Again, they're just not the best lip products that I've ever purchased because of YouTube. Okay, coming up next, we have another really shocking thing, which is MAC. MAC lipsticks. I have five MAC lipsticks in my collection. I don't know if I want to get more. Maybe it depends on the color. I'm going to talk about the colors that I have because I have quite a few finishes. I have matte. So I have smoked purple, which is my favorite. I also have v v v v v v mm, heroin which is another one of my favorites. I also have Viva Glam 3, which is my, oh, this is my favorite matte lipsticks ever. And I also have some that are, that are not matte. So I have this, which is an amplified one in the color Morange. And I also have this, which is a satin in the color Cyber. It's really, really pretty. Now, they're very good lipsticks, very good quality lipsticks. They're just, I, I, can, I can think of at least three that are better so if i can think of at least three that are better then they should come in the number four number three is going to be this which is a product that i love it used to live in my handbag for the longest time and it's the dior lip glow color revive balm this is basically a lip balm that adjusts to the ph or the temperature of your body as you can see this is this is this is all i have left of the product 
I used to use this every single day. I still think it's a fab, 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 fab product, but it's not the best product that YouTube made me buy. It was definitely something that was hyped up for a long period of time. And I definitely caved in and I don't regret it by any means, but it's not the best product that YouTube made me buy, you know. So, yeah. Talking about something that is really hyped up, especially in the British realm, I feel, we're going to talk about the Clarence Instant Light Natural Lip Perfectors, I think. These are glosses that come in a tube with a sponge tip applicator. These are fabulous glosses. They are the most creamy, the most non-sticky, the most pleasantly smelling lips, lip glosses. And they are very comfortable on the lips. I adore these lip glosses. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. They are very nice, but they're not the best thing as a lot of people made them seem. A lot of people are like, well, I'm going to collect all of the shades. And I'm going to have all of the shades. And I'm going to have backups of them. And I'm going to keep on buying them until the day I die. Yes, they're nice. But I wouldn't buy more than one or two. Because it's essentially a gloss. And the color is very faint. You can hardly see any color. But it, because of the comfort and because of the like effortless uh, reapplication throughout the day, it's definitely one of the best products that I purchased. And I do not regret it by any means. But I'm just going to have to say that it's not the best. The best lip product that YouTube made me buy, and I thought about this for a long time, and I came to the conclusion that it has to be the YSL Glossy Stains. The YSL Glossy Stains are definitely a classic. They've been raved about a lot more in the past than they are nowadays, but I still think that these are the best liquid lipsticks in the market. Now, liquid li lipstick comes with the association that it needs to be matte, but in my opinion, this is even better because of the shine, because of the longevity, and because of the color selection. I love the formulation, I love the color pigmentation, I love how long-lasting they are, I love how they feel on the lips. A lot of people say that they're drying. Well, have you tried Kat Von D? liquid lipsticks have you tried sephora liquid lipsticks have you tried the bourgeois liquid lipsticks have you tried um the pupa liquid lipsticks if these ones aren't drying how come this is drying i don't get it but i really really like it regardless and i don't think that they're drying at all so yeah it's a long video, I know. You had a lot of information and we talked about 20 products together. I hope that you're still watching and if you still are, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you all in the very next video. Please let me know of the ultimate best and the ultimate worst product that YouTube made me buy. I can tell you right now that the ultimate best product that YouTube made me buy is the MAC Empty Palette and the ultimate worst product that YouTube made me buy. Oh, that's difficult. I think it's probably the Moji drawer. Or, you know what? It's not here because I could read a bit, but it's the YSL uh, Volupt colors, lipsticks, whatever. The awful ones that smell like fake fruit and feel like molten crayons on your lips. So I hate them. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to watch more videos to come in the future. And I hope to see all of you in the very next video. Please leave me the comments down below because I'm, I'm definitely curious to know what are your favorite and your least favorite products from watching YouTube by being persuaded by a lot of YouTubers because I'm very curious. And I will see all of you in the very next video. Bye. Mm.